Good evening, y'all. Thank you so much for joining DG Coffee Chat special blend on HowlRound TV. My name is Cece Wright. I am the Director's Gathering, also known as DG, Director of Membership and Engagement, and have the pleasure of being the host of DG Coffee Chats. Tonight's episode called Special Blend also includes my DG teammates, Director of Programming, Brian Barrett, and Executive Director and Founder of DG, Jill Harrison. But I want to start this evening with our land acknowledgement. The unceded land on which DG is based is part of the ancestral homeland of the Lenape Lenape people. We honor the Lenape and other indigenous caretakers of these lands and waters, the elders who have lived here before, the indigenous people of today, and the generations to come. Um, and the land that DG is based is colonially known as Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So tonight's episode is very specific and focused. We are here to chat about the inaugural DG convening, manifesting an ecosystem for directors, and offer some initial responses to the event that just ended about 33 minutes ago. So our vision for the convening was to create a tangible experience for directors from all over the world to come together virtually in the pursuit of DG's mission to build community, share skills, and promote peer advocacy. Our goal is to build an interconnected and diverse community for directors. Directors of different backgrounds and unique skill sets who have values rooted in placing the acknowledgement and care of people and humanity over products, people over the idea that this is how theater gets made, people over capital. And let me run down the programming we offered this weekend as we kicked off the convening with a salon where members of DG talked about what they were looking forward to over the weekend. Uh, Josh Sobel offered an inspiring seminar where we were asked to consider adopting an abundance mindset and create and share with each other our own artistic manifestos. May Adralis offered a keynote speech where we were reminded that the director's impact has the power to disrupt oppressive systems. And this keynote was followed by a beautifully facilitated discussion by Leah Fakuri, who encouraged us to lean into May's call to action to take personal responsibility and accountability in the practice of directing. Noelle Diane Johnson, who's the founder of Artists Heal and also a DG board member, gave us tools for becoming more effective and thoughtful leaders in cultivating the environments in which we make theater, uh, healing practices and establishing healthy boundaries. Mia Benjamin and Sam Tower of the company Ninth Planet discussed their own journey and continued learning and developing shared leadership in an artistic company. Finally, we hosted a round table of uh, directors from director-centered organizations to discuss what it means and what it takes to engage in director-centric programming. So uh, Jill, Bree, it was a very full weekend. And like I said before, this is our initial response to something that ended just a few minutes ago. But with that in mind, what is resonating with you as we come together this evening? Well, uh, I'll say um, after several years of working with directors gathering um, and having some really full conversations with the directors within our membership, what was wonderful is having a whole weekend of seeing and hearing themes that we've been talking about for years now. Um, as something that everyone kind of wanted to bring to the forefront, seeing these um, different offerings kind of all align. We someday, I hope, where all of our guest artists have an opportunity to meet each other in person, have an opportunity to talk with each other um, as, as we offer a convening. I hope we can do that someday, and that'll, that would be wonderful. But that didn't happen this time. And yet our guest artists were all tapping into the same conversations, the same ideas, the same themes of 
shared leadership, accountability, human-centered work, and um, acknowledging that there are systems that need to be acknowledged and challenged and broken down in order for us to both come together as a community of artists who are like-minded, um, have similar experiences, but also the only real way we can make change is to do it together. So that was, it was, that's what's sticking with me right now. <laughs> I love that, Brie. The only way that we can make change is by doing it together. That's, yes. <laughs> um, so it's interesting. I feel like I've spent the last decade um, looking far and wide for a convening like experience as a freelance director. Um, uh, and having that sense of like the, the, the catalyst or a, a place that could be where DG as it, you know, is building the community, but like having somewhere where folks could come in and out of wherever they were in their lives and, um, be able to connect directly with each other around big ideas. Um, and I feel like I've had the privilege of, um, interfacing with folks around these kinds of conversations now for quite some time. Um, and I'd love just like similar to what Brie was saying, which is like the opportunity to see those people have those conversations to, with them, with each other, um, and to be able to be more observer. Um, and yeah, and just like, and speak to community, right? So we speak a great deal about product and even, even process. But the sense of having directors talk about what it means to um, care deeply about not just, you know, their work, but also each other's work. And then also something that Drell L. Henderson shared with us. He's our, uh, one of our board members and a, a regional theater director. Um, I love two concepts he shares a great deal, which is, you know, caring deeply about what is coming after. Um, right, the future and how we can contribute to that. That's why we've come up with this concept of ecosystem, um, a director center. We didn't come up with ecosystem as a concept. I want to clarify <laughs> that. <laughs> Whoa. Um, no, director centric ecosystem. Um, but that contribution to like what, what is coming down, you know, um, not doubt. Like what is what is next? Um, what is and then what is what is next? And also something that he shares and and I mentioned it within um, the essay that we have shared with Hal Round that um, came out today uh, is around the great equalizer mm -hmm. and how DG and our contribution to the director centric ecosystem and with a convening as as a platform for that opportunity to to be a great equalizer. Um, and so all folks can be seen, all directors can be seen and heard and connected with, um, and it doesn't matter. The gatekeeping <laughs> ceases to exist and you get to just be humans. And I think that's really great. And that was happening this weekend and I wanted so much more. Like, <laughs> <it> just, <laughs> I could have hung out in those rooms for even longer than we were in them. So yeah. I want to. I want to offer one thing that's like resonating with me is something that happened in our, our most recent event, which was the happy hour round table. Um, and I believe it was Danilo Gambini who shared the idea of like, of the process. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the process similar like to creating a, a piece of art and theater. It's like building a house. So comparing the play, the written play itself, it's like a, a blueprint. <clears throat> and I think what's resonating with me <laughs> is that I've been, uh, I'm choking now, but I'm okay. <laughs> I think, I'm getting, this is full disclosure. I think I smell like a bug. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to cough for a second. You, you do that. <laughs> Friends, this is this is DG team in real life. This is us. Absolutely. <laughs> Always acknowledging that we are human. Mm -hmm. um, there's a biological component to that. <laughs> I think I'm okay now. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. 
<laughs> no, I saw the thing fly in my mouth. It. it wants I'm to be a that. part of the director's network ecosystem. Okay. So back to print. Um, what I thought about because I I garden and I I think about the process is being like a gardener. It's like I don't make the plants grow. I just create the environment where like mm -hmm. they get the the healthiest soil um, that they need that it has the chemical you know, structure that that particular plant needs to, to grow and produce fruit, uh, that it's in a spot where it's gonna get the most sun if it needs more sun or if it needs less sun, it gets some shade. Um, and that that was like resonating with me. And I'm like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's similar. Um, someone else, share. Okay, well, I, I just wanna like kind of riff a little bit off of that because I think one of the things that's really fascinating about the conversations that were coming up was not just a, an idea of the process of being a director or the craft of the, the director and how we can think of ourselves less as these controllers or um, in a hierarchical sense that as collaborators our our work is about creating environment for everyone to bring their fullest selves to the space to, to create the most open um, process that can eventually, hopefully, create the best product of what we all want to, we want to succeed, the production itself. And so there was that element of this weekend that was really fascinating to listen to. And then with that was also acknowledging the human presence of the director, um, such as with Noelle Diane Johnson's pickup class being so focused on healing work and healing work that it has to start with the self. It has to. And setting boundaries and the sense of accountability, all of that has to be in in the realm of a director saying I am human I am fallible I am human I have needs I am human I have expressions and joy and perspective that can be brought into this room and as I acknowledge that about myself I can make space for my collaborators and just that acknowledgement feels so revolutionary in the conversation around directing and creating um, theatrical work. And I feel like we were having many conversations like that and, um, and those who were participating and attending these sessions, it, it, they were bringing in their own perspective of that desire, that want, that hope to build to sort to something that is more empathetic and more acknowledging of the human condition so that we can be the translators of that when creating work and making space for the people who are creating that work with us. And I really appreciated that. <laughs> so I don't know if you two agree, but I feel like that's what we were identifying as we were going through the weekend. I absolutely agree. I think what I wanted to bring here is something that I felt like Jill synthesized so well, like over the weekend is just like all of these, these themes that were popping up in different spaces. And Jill, I was wondering if you could just share those with us. I sure can. Thank you. It was I, I feel like I put my dramaturg hat on for <laughs> a moment to reflect on, you know, what were, what, yeah, what were the, the resonating moments? Um, and those ideas that we kept hearing over and over again was the sense of abundance, um, the sense of community, a sense of healing, boundaries, mm -hmm. accountability, artistry, practice and gratitude. Uh, it was like the director's affirmations this weekend. Like, I feel like they should be cards. <laughs> we very gifted affirmation cards to us, I think a year ago. And um, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, all of our birthdays are in the month of October. <laughs> 
Um, so in a way, like, I feel like these would be really great um, affirmation cards for directors. Um, and I think they also reiterate to Bree's point in the sense of like reiterating self, right? And then self to other, and then other to community, mm-hmm. and then community to ecosystem, right? To like that, that, that greater contribution um, beyond. Yeah. That's so lovely. Yeah, I, I mean, speaking of contributions, I I like to I like to think about moments that not only resonated but things that I want to take with me. Some of those things are things that I I don't choose to take with me. I just like I can't stop thinking about mm-hmm. an idea or um, a concept or like even words that someone said that just stick with me well beyond this space. And I know that we are just initially responding to this and we will do a more (laughs) thorough and deeper, um, uh, you know, uh, after action, post-mortem, whatever you'd like to call it of this experience to, to grab at all of those things. But what are, what are, what is something that you want to keep from this weekend? I, the vulnerability of the spaces that we we offer the opportunity for um for us to be like us as a team to be our fullest selves when um we program is pretty amazing so in in a couple of these i identified like one of the greatest struggles for me is just having enough confidence to believe as a director i have agency and power to facilitate this change that we're all talking about. And to to have that affirmation, to have that encouragement from this weekend. And I wanna hold that, I wanna keep those affirmations, that encouragement um, to hold myself accountable to like gaining confidence and owning that I do have this agency and power to believe that I can I can change what the systematic way um, process is expected to be from a director and and change that and say like, no, I, I know you think I'm supposed to have all the answers, but I want this to be a collaborative space and and that's okay. It's new for you as a collaborator, but tell me how I can make this process good for you and model that behavior for you that I really want it to be open and collaborative um, and that I don't think all of my answers are the right answers. Thank you, Bray. Jill, what are you going to (laughs) keep? I love this question, Cece. Thank you for this question. Um, I am going to keep I think mine's going to be a, a bit glo- more global. I think I, not that personal doesn't matter, Brie, and I'm so excited to hear that and you share that. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, of a sense of, so I'm rereading this book, The Art of Gathering by Priya Parker. Um, and it was pretty uncanny that right around when I was rereading about like, purpose, Right. So the having purpose behind gathering um, and how there is something imperative about purpose and in in directorial speak, we usually call that vision um, our point of view. And I feel like what I'll keep is that and I'm so, so grateful for and excited is that the purpose of this convening. has just begun. (laughs) Like I, right. Like I, I'm so, we worked so hard (laughs) figuring out what we wanted, the purpose of this, that we called it a convening, not a conference, right? Like also defining what we are and what we are not, um, right. What DG does and what we wanted to do with this convening and what we didn't want to do with this convening. Um, and I think that offering this sense of this purpose of manifesting a director centric ecosystem is, is a launching point. Um, and I'm, what I'll keep is that, is that we're, you know, we are launching. And so what, what's next? Um, and that there were just so many gorgeous seeds to, to CC's gardening 
motif, like so many amazing seeds dropped this weekend. Um, and also like we have, DG has a history of like relationships forming and going off into the world. And it started at a DG something. And then we sometimes hear about it and it's the most exciting thing in the world. <laughs> like I just, I love it. I love that people are like, oh my God, yeah, I met so-and-so and now we make all this theater together. Um, or I, you know, they're my partner or <laughs> now they help watch my kid. I mean, there's just a variety of different, again, that ecosystem, um, that humanity that um, getting to just watch that, that manifest this weekend was, was really, really meaningful. Thank you. <clears throat> and thank you both for, for this conversation. I know we're fresh off of doing all of this. So there's, you know, <laughs> we're going to go to sleep tonight and think about so many other things in the morning when we, uh, when we, <laughs> we wake up about like things that we want to keep. And um, I appreciate you for sharing, sharing those initial thoughts with me. Mm -hmm. um, but Speaking of, oh, Brie, did you want to say something? Oh, no, I I was just going to ask what you want to keep or what you're going to keep. Oh, what I want to keep, <laughs> I, you know, I was, it's like this idea, somebody brought up this like idea of failing forward and, and it's like, it's intentional, it's intentional, um, you know, it's a rejection of this idea of perfection, which, you know, has has ties to uh, an oppressive way of operating in the world and um doesn't do much for you know actually improving which i feel like is what i want to strive for rather than perfection so the idea of failing forward to you know use um what are perceived as failures or you know opportunities to um to improve using, you know, uh, uh, um, thinking of them differently. So it's it's more of a frame of of mind and uh, knowing that you know you're not necessarily going to get everything exactly as you intended the first time you try. But the important thing is that you keep practicing and learning from what didn't work before. Um, and so yeah, that 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 phrase has stuck with me a bit is failing forward, mm -hmm. not looking back, um, not going back just because I failed at something because that old way I'm familiar with, even though I know it can be, you know, destructive to mm -hmm. myself, to others around me, um, but actually moving forward and improving. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks. Thanks for throwing that back at me. And I think <laughs> I think, uh, like speaking of keeping things, um, and all of the gem, I was, I was Jill comparing it in my head to the cave of wonders in Aladdin. Cause I was like, all these <laughs> gems dropped, you know, during the convening, there's just so many like treasures, real treasures, like in what people were offering, um, this weekend. But if you, if you didn't get the chance to participate, I know it sounded like such a great weekend and it was, <laughs> there is an opportunity for you to, uh, to scoop up some of the gems. Bree, can you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. So throughout the weekend, we did record some of our offerings and um, starting tomorrow, um, you can register for an async package um, and have access to those recordings starting on November 1st. Um, we're going to be doing some technical work to have them prepared over the next couple of weeks, but you can pre-register to get access to those recordings and you'll have them from November 1st to December 31st, November 1st, or whenever you sign up until December 31st. Um, and you can listen to these really fantastic guest artists and what they had to offer and all of those gems that were dropped. Um, and if you're interested, go to our website, directorsgathering.org backslash DG dash convening. Um, or just go to our website and explore and find your way to the async package and see what else we've been up to over these past several years. Um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm very excited that we're able to revisit a lot of the offerings that we had this weekend. Um, 
just myself want to go revisit them and reflect on it. So uh, I do hope that uh, you'll consider our async package. Um, yeah. And so Jill, I think you're going to give us, you're going to like lead us out of this with some thank yous because we like, we're a small team, but we had some amazing people supporting us throughout this convening, our first foray into something so huge. Um, and so Jill Harrison, thank those folks. I will, I will lead with gratitude. So we had some incredible DG convening partners, organizations that, um, that supported this sense of build uh, manifesting an ecosystem for directors. And those companies are Passage Theater Company in Trenton, New Jersey, Theater Exile in Philadelphia, Women's Theater Festival, the National Women's Theater Festival in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Theater Horizon in Norristown. Pennsylvania. And then we had um, another fantastic partner in Jeremy Gable, who um, helped us with our um, captioning throughout the weekend. Um, I also want to do a, a shout out to Jackie Goldfinger, um, who is a remarkable, remarkable human artist, playwright, um, art, arts leader, uh, and also um, recently um, produced the National Conference for uh, LMDA. The literary managers and dramaturgs of America, and Jackie was was a real um, guide for us as we were finding our way forward with creating the inaugural convening. And so I just wanted to make sure we we did a shout out there, um, and of course the DG board, um, who you can learn more about on our website, um, and the fantastic people that they are. And um, also, of course, HowlRound. HowlRound, um, I, I'm skipping a number. I will go to the guest artist, but I'm going to skip first because I'm saying HowlRound, um, HowlRound TV, uh, and also HowlRound uh, Theater Commons uh, published our, our essay today about building a director-centric community or a director-centered community. Um, please give it a read. Uh, some continued seeds of, of the ecosystem. Um, and then I, we have one minute left, but our guest artists and facilitators, um, again, are all listed on our website. Um, and you can listen to the async and um, get to know all of them more. And finally, um, last but not least, our DG interim producer, Randy Alexis Hickey. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you, Bree. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, HowlRound. Thank you, everybody who participated in the convening this weekend. And thank you for joining us for this special blend of DG Coffee Chats. Uh, please take care of yourself so much more soon. Good night.